So we're here at the CES Unveiled. Hi, so who are you? Hi, my name is James Pryor. I work for the product office of Sci5, helping to manage product launches and analyst and press relations. So um, Sci5 is kind of like the Risk Five company, no? One of them. I mean, yeah. What is Sci-Fi doing in the RISC-V ecosystem? So, what Sci-Fi does is we are the leading provider of commercial RISC-V IP and silicon. So whether you want a core or a full chip or an SOC design, we can help you design the product that you need for your market. Does that mean all these companies that are kind of like joining or t thinking about RISC-V are partnering with you to create new designs? There's a lot of partners out there. We have now 150 design wins. We're working with six of the top 10 semiconductor companies, uh, but only three of those different wins are actually public yet. From Microchip with uh, the Polifier SOC through to WAMI with the Amazfit smartwatch and Fadu with the SSD controller. Which one is the last one? Fadu, they make, yeah, they're a brand new Korean startup that can create enterprise storage, very, very fast SSDs for enterprise use. Uh, so I did a video with uh, Huami Amasfit, and um, I was wondering if their Risk Five chip is actually in smartwatches or it's just a production a future project. Is it? Is it shipping? Yeah, it's in the shipping products right now. It's inside of there. They're using our uh, using our cores to power the functions of the watch. It's very, very strong, good product, and we're excited to see them go broader than the China market and launch the rest of the world. But perhaps uh, the way they're using it is like a side CPU next to the ARM core. Like they have, a, is it an extra chip? Or is it the main chip of the smartwatch? Yeah, there's two chips in the watch. One is from Qualcomm, which provides the connectivity and some of the AI processing. And then the other chip is from uh, themselves and using the Sci-5 cores for a lot of the core functions of the watch, including some of the key day-to-day um, -day gatekeeping regular operations. And uh, the first one was uh, a microchip polar. Polifier SOC is an FPGA uses RISC-V uh, cores inside of it to uh, produce the performance and programmability. Is that shipping or is it just uh, for trade shows? It's just been announced. I think they're going to be shipping this year. So you should follow up with them and see when exactly they're coming to market. Would you say 150 design wins, really? That's, yeah, that sounds like a lot. Wins. Yeah, it is a lot. We're very excited about it. That means you have more than 150 in employees. Yeah, okay. way more. <laughs> way more? Yeah, we're up to nearly 600 now. We have 16 design centers across the world. So we have a lot of rapid hyper growth in 2019. We expect to continue to grow in 2020. 600, oh, this is a big enterprise. It is. It, it, I thought it was just a small startup. Well, we're still growing. There's a lot more to do. We've got a lot of things to, to complete in our ambitious goals of making RISC V the choice of the world for their processing needs. But we're, we're working hard, right? Because our, our product roadmap has a lot of different aspects to it. You have all of the different cores that we offer. What, what are you looking here? Sir? Looking yeah, here? sure. So this is our core product roadmap. You have our E cores, which are 32-bit, great for embedded use. S cores, which are 64-bit, also great for embedded microcontroller use. And our U cores, which are high-performance 64-bit application-capable cores for application processes. Alongside those core IPs, we have a number of different other IPs. So we can provide interfaces and IOs, as well as fabrics and other IP to help build the whole SOC. And we can tap into our extensive partners in Design Share to give even more IP for any design. So, um is it like uh, when people want to do a risk 5 they pretty much have to go through Sci-5? Or is anybody doing stuff by themselves? There are tons of people doing stuff by themselves. You don't have to go through Sci-5, though obviously we would prefer that. But it's a very wide and broad ecosystem. A great example of, uh, is that there's a lot of different providers working on their own risk 5 implementations. But 
Sci Five being founded by the inventors of Risk Five and being so close to the heart of all of the different developments is the natural choice because of the strength of our IP, the quality of our products, and the, our abilities to deliver SOCs and silicon, where it makes us a really strong contender for every design. Uh, Sci Five kind of launched Risk Five, or not really? No, no. Is it, uh, it was, the same people behind in the beginning? Or? Is, yeah, definitely the same people. Sci Fi was founded by the inventors of Risk Five, but we didn't launch Risk Five. We're just take, leading the charge on the adoption and spreading the word of the Risk Five uprising. So, who were the who's those founders? So, the founders are Krista Sanovich, who's our chief architect and also the Risk Five Foundation chairman. You have Yun Sup Lee and Andrew Waterman. And they are all part of the original UC Berkeley team that created Risk Five a decade ago, and then five years ago created the Risk Five Foundation to share that ISA with the world, free and open. And then, because you need experience in building silicon, in designing cores, to use that ISA, we created Sci Five so that we could have a great partner for anybody who wants to build a chip or design a new product based on Risk Five. So. Um how would you say is the status of Risk Five in the industry? Is it more than just talk and hype, or is it? Is, how far are we? And uh, how far is uh, mass adoption, or is it happening? Or yeah, it's, it's well past the initial adoption phase. You see, we've got partners like Samsung saying that they're going to use Risk Five cores for AI, 5G, and autonomous driving application processes. There's no way that that can be considered initial adoption. This is mainstream, this is real. We now have a really strong foundation in the market and we're just going to continue to grow. But many companies are saying they are joining the Risk Five uh, organization or something or adding their names to the list, right? But it's not the same as shipping. No, it takes time to ship cores. So we now have 450 plus members of the Risk Five Foundation. That's a very strong, healthy base with over 300 of those being companies like NVIDIA, IBM, Red Hat. You've got the biggest names in industry and technology joining the Risk Five Foundation so they can develop their own IP, so they can be part of this uprising and part of adopting Risk Five. The benefits of Risk Five stand for themselves with low power, high performance, ease of use, and high security as well as a low cost of adoption. But all these things are also in the arm, right? For sure, but that doesn't mean there shouldn't be competition. We're not looking to say one product is bad, ours is good, we're offering a choice. And the, the benefit of our choice and the Risk Five Foundation is that we can prevent fragmentation by using a common ISA, and we can also improve power use and efficiency and increase adoption of the Risk V ISA with domain specific designs. If you look at the design trends that are going on right now, it's not about the CPU architecture, it's about the whole SOC capability. How do you add in intelligence for AI decisions in different places? Uh, sorry, I, I ran out of uh, battery. So I was asking, um, so, ARM also has a lot of these things, but one thing that kind of happened, maybe it's because of Risk Five, ARM and some kind of open sourcing thing. Do you hear this? But then um, people can uh, can modify the architecture somehow, or but yeah. So I think I think if I were to look at ARM and say what are they doing in response to industry requests, is custom instructions, and I think that's what you're referring to and also designing custom silicon. So it's an in, you know the industry as a whole is moving towards having domain specific architectures. CPUs or processors or SOCs designed with a specific function in mind that's more generic than a, uh, an application specific integrated circuit but less programmable than an FPGA. So to achieve that, you need a very specific set of instructions to be supported, but you also need a very focused set of instructions to enable the, what you have. Now, the reason why RISC-V is successful in this area is because of our scalability and our extensibility. Sci-Fi in particular offers scalable architectures 
whereas everybody else is offering pretty much a standard core that everyone should use. We offer the customizability and flexibility to configure your core the way you need it for your project. And that's the key differentiator uh, for sci-fi versus everyone else. But uh, when people make ARM uh, SOCs, some, they do a lot of customization, right? They do like some people want to have one small, two big cores, or uh, you know, like, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, big little, all these things, and uh, microcontrollers. Yep. That's not the kind of customization you're talking about? You're talking about different kind of customization? Um, yeah, it's an extension of that. So when you're talking about heterogeneous compute, where you're mixing and matching different types of cores, we have no restrictions on which cores you use from our portfolio. When you're talking about custom SOCs, we're not talking about a custom architecture design, we're talking about all the IP inside of that silicon, whether it's an AI accelerator, or a vision processor, or an audio processor, or if it's something else. All of that integration and customization is the new domain-specific process of focus. So uh, when you say that you have a bunch of cores, is that what you're talking about here? That's the Sci-5 uh, cores implementations of uh, RISC-V? You have a... a you have a broad rate all the way from microcontrollers to big things? Yeah, absolutely. So we have our E-series cores, which are 32-bit embedded processor cores, our S-series cores, which are 64-bit embedded processor cores, and we have our U-series cores, which are application processors for Linux and their scaling performance as well. How is the Linux support? It's great. We've got a number of different distributions ported over. We have a number of different libraries and compilers. There's a lot of people able to use Linux for whatever their application needs are with RISC-V. And uh, um, so Sci-Fi is uh, looking to be a big player in the future of chips. What's, hap what, what's, uh, what's the big vision? The big vision is to make it easier and simpler to design your products. So what we want to do is unlock your product roadmap from the stagnated single point of, of issue with a, a standard core roadmap update into allowing you to design your processor cores around your workload right now. And that's going to help you declare silicon independence as you can move these different parts of the IP to different process technologies and nodes. So it's really about owning your roadmap as a product company and not being reliant on a technology roadmap that you don't have any input on. Uh, so what's the price? Because uh, Risk Five is supposed to be, I mean, it's free, right? But uh, working with Sci Five, there's like a licensing, or how does it work? Yeah, sure. So Risk Five, as an instruction set architecture, is free and open, and you can grab it wherever. Now, people around the world are used to and like paying for excellence, expertise, and engineering. The way I think about it is the internal combustion engine. Everyone knows how the internal combustion engine works. They're taught how to design one or how they work in school. But if you want to buy one, you don't just go download one and say, here it is. You have to buy one from somebody who has it, and you want to buy support for it. And there's a variation in performance levels. If you go to Italy, then between Fiat and Ferrari is a massive difference in performance and features and functionality. And you pay for that difference. And what you're paying for is engineering excellence and expertise. And that's what you buy from Sci-Fi is engineering excellence and expertise because you're getting IP that's silicon proven, that's designed to meet a specific product need, and that has been used well many times for all of the different use cases you're looking for. So that's why we have a licensing model that is based on production use as well as uh, your units so you can figure out what is the best method, method and model for you. It's similar to licensing an ARM core? Possibly, I don't really know how ARM license their products. As far as I remember, maybe it's something to do with a, a big upfront fee and then a small fee for each chip maybe. Is it something like this? If they want to start a new project with you, there's some kind of startup fee, and then after there might be one by one. Or? 
Yeah, any, anybody who's interested in, in talking to Sci Five about pricing should contact our sales department. Nice. And where are you based? We have 16 design centers worldwide. Our headquarters is in San Mateo, California, and we have a, a, another big engineering center in Austin, Texas, where I work out of. Uh, is it possible that um, all the Risk Five stuff can be made in a way uh, to not fragment away from ARM? Is there a way that uh, somehow maybe there would be a layer in all the IoT stuff that software would be compatible? Or is there a way for all the stuff to be compatible from one to the other? Um, I don't think so. I, I think that would violate ARM's licensing agreements or their patents. So I, I don't think that would be a good idea. Ah, so it's nothing to do with reverse engineering anything, right? It's just a... No, there's no need. If, if you want to be compatible with ARM software, then use ARM. But if you're looking to lower your power, use less area, and increase performance, you should use Risk Five. And uh, so it's the Google chairman who started uh, uh, Risk, isn't it, uh, Patterson? What is yeah, his name? he's not the chairman of Google. No. Well, what is he at Google? He's something. I, I don't know. You should ask him. I thought he was the chairman now. Oh, uh, uh, Alphabet. I don't know. Something like that. I was like, whoa. Is, is, but there's two guys, no? They did the risk. Is it one of them? But uh, how, did, how are they involved in Risk Five in any way? Or not? yeah, they're involved in the Risk Five Foundation. So they help to push further with developing the new aspects of it and increasing the adoption and answering questions. Cool. All right. Uh, thanks a lot. So what's next? What's the big announcement here? Yeah, so we're just here to talk about all of the great products we've got from our U8 series cores, which we launched uh, recently at the Lindy Conference. This is a high performance, out of order microprocessor ar architecture based on RISC V, scalable and very uh, low area as well as high efficiency. So we're excited about that being introduced to the world. And we're also talking about our Sci Fi Learn Inventor which is our new board, now available worldwide. And it's for universities and students and makers to be able to learn how to program RISC-V for IoT. It's the world's first IoT board based on RISC-V that is qualified for AWS IoT Core. So very exciting that you can use that now with Amazon Web Services IoT Core. And it's got a bunch of LEDs? Or? Yeah, these are LEDs. It has a bunch of different features. You've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it's programmable by USB, it has accelerometer, gyroscope, light sensor, compass, so you can, it has a bunch of different features like you might see on an IoT board in the field. It's just a superset of those so you can learn how to program all of them together. All right, and uh, what's happening day to day at the office? Well, day to day is just about answering questions about RISC V and helping to adopt Sci Five cores with all of our partners.